unless I might not be that uh, comedian as he was. Thanks for that. Um, first of all, please do interrupt me anytime because it would be very nice if we could have a talk with each other and not only me talking to you. Um, especially to all the hill hackers who are in the room, um, you're also very invited to add your perspective as well. Um, so yeah, my name is Sva. I'm an anthropologist by training, um, and yeah, part of this hacker scene since 10 years or something. And this is what uh, Kiran and Zainab were asking me about. Um, so I got in contact with Hasgeek the first time in 2013, and first I just got to meet them in their IRC channel, which was really alive back then, and later in Meetspace in Dom Lua, um, because the office was a uh, sharing office with the Center for Internet and Society, which was, uh, was working back then. So meanwhile, a lot of things happened, and that's why I'm standing here uh, telling you about this. So yeah, those uh, two guys approached me and asked me to share my experience with communities. They asked me, what does it take? And how are you guys doing that with the CCC in Germany? And what the heck happened that Hillex was so, such a beautiful uh, amount of people engaged and passionate and uh, then once you have those people, how, what do you do to like keep them together? Um, so that's quite some questions which I barely allowed myself to ask. But I said, okay, I'd be thinking about it. It's a nice opportunity to do that. And I'm telling you, this is just, I think, the beginning of a, of a um, thought. Um, so let's first start with some introduction. Uh, you might not heard about Hillax or CCC. So whom of you knows about the Kiosk Computer Club or the Kiosk Communication Congress? Okay, yeah, barely anyone. But okay, there were some hands. <laughs> okay, this is some logos of it. Maybe it already gives an idea, but I'll be telling you about it. And then uh, who of you have heard about Hillax? Hacking and making in the Himalayas. Okay, that's some more. Nice. And who has heard about Hack Beach? It's going to happen just now for the first time. Okay, great. So, yeah, this Kiosk Computer Club. Um, that's founded in 1981. Uh, it got an official asso association in uh, 1986. We also founded a company for running the events in 1999, and in 2003, we also founded a foundation. The foundation is in brackets because officially it's not connected, um, because it's already kind of a hack to have those three institutions um, to interact with the world outside. So you have a company, you can like create builds, you can receive builds and all that stuff. You have an association for the people, and you have a foundation where you can receive donations. Um, but the most important part is the club, the inside. So you don't need to be a member, you don't need to be anything. Uh, so the company also doesn't have employed anyone. Everyone is just part of the, of the club. Um, chaos, yes. As decentralized as possible, there are around 30 different associations all over the German-speaking area. Everyone is doing their own things, but it's all about freedom and it's all for free. Um, main topics is at the one hand side providing infrastructure like conferences and hackerspaces for knowledge sharing, for bringing people together. At the other hand side it's also stuff like helping to fight legal cases at law, um, helping people like when there's any interesting case um, arising we just support them, um, and then transparency in government, freedom of information, human rights, all that stuff. What we don't have is uh, a nice website, I'm really sorry for that. So if you click CCCD, you click on the English button, nothing will happen. But the conferences, there's event CCCD, this is English, media.ccc is a really nice repository of the last 15 years of conference talks, and um, there are small ones and big ones, and they sometimes have different focuses, but they're all about to get together and share. 
So I'll be just browsing through some pictures now. That's the main hall of the Congress as it takes place uh, the last three years in that house. Um, it's, yeah, people are also just sitting there and working together. So it's not like here that you're attending the conference and you're just sitting in a hall. You're also attending the conference like that. So you take your stuff with you and you're sitting there and doing things. Um, that's like, yeah, a lot of space for people to just sit and hang around. And then also those assemblies, that's groups being together, bringing their stuff. That's the, um, the house from the outside, that was the first time in 1984. Um, then that was the old venue in, in Berlin, and also we go camping. That's how it looks like when we go camping. That was just this year as well. Um, this is a picture from 2011 though, but yeah, it's also about talks, it's about bringing devices, exchanging, um, it's about art as well, and also freaky stuff. <laughs> um, there's also stuff for kids, and um, really nice installations, and all these things. And everything is done voluntary. No one is employed. Hundreds are taking up responsibility, and thousands are supporting it. Um, then uh, we also do party, because we love technology and playing around with it. Um, we also have a robot that's making cocktails and stuff like that. Then Hilex, um, that's uh, in the mountains, in uh, Dharamshala, in Himachal Pradesh. So uh, somewhere where the mouse pointer is right now, I'm zooming in a bit here. Um, so you can see here, uh, no, I'm needing this. That's nice. This is the mountain range, which is in our back. And it has, uh, it already goes up to 4,000, 4,300 and something. And it's kind of the first mountain range of the Himalayas. Um, so we are at the foothills, very um, at the bottom, which means our hack base, for example, is at uh, 1,200 meters. And this is where we live um, and very like, started to have the idea um, to be a coalition of independent community volunteers, um, just a group of people doing things. So the main idea of Hill Hacks is two things. One is bringing together hackers and makers for having more self-motivated, free and open te developments and technology as a gathering of the open information society focused on the love and joy of free and open source technology and knowledge, and also to form connections. And then uh, we have the kids and the locals. We want to educate children and the interested general public. We hope to get them critically thinking and creatively um, to develop thoughts and ideas with the tools and knowledge they'll be exposed to. So we invite various people, and this is also where now um, also this community thing comes up a bit already, so it's really not easy to define. So here we made a definition of free thinkers and thinkers, creative minds and artists, techies and hobbyists, hackers and makers, crafters and scientists, humanists and engineers, activists and coders, geeks and nerds, designers and philosophers, roboters and artificial intelligence, and other interesting beings doing interesting stuff. So, um, yeah, it's not easy to define, and this is what I'm trying to do today. Um, we invited to share, demonstrate, teach, and talk about things you love, and it doesn't have to be about technology necessarily. It's uh, about the passion you have doing something. It's about being the nerd in, some, in something. Um, then also, please leave your suits at home and pack all your camping gear. <laughs> so yeah, Hillex happened in uh, the first time in October 2014 for two and a half weeks. Uh, the next time was in, uh, oh, I forgot that, in uh, May and June 2015 for around five, five or six weeks. And next year will already be April, May and June. 
Um, there's a two-month code camp uh, organized from Freeman from Jaga here in Bangalore. So they'll be doing the code camp up there. So everyone is very invited to think about coming up. Um, the core time will be end of May, beginning of June, and it ends then beginning of June with the conference itself. So yeah, here's some pictures of that. So we tried to harvest some hardware to do stuff there. Um, we did stuff with the kids. We had talks. We sat together and thinkers. We um, also had some fun with sports. <laughs> That's an electronic unicycle, a really nice device. Um, again, some talks, music, also carpentry, and then uh, arts. This is very nice. This is conductive tape, so you can like draw pictures and have um, lights in it. Uh, the kids really loved it, and um, yeah. So we went to kids. We had great fun all together. Mm, sorry about that. And this is Hack Beach. So there's no pictures about Hack Beach because it didn't happen so far. It's gonna happen in um, November. So everyone is very invited to come down to Kerala and join us for the Hack Beach. So now you guys know about CCC in Hillex. And you've learned that there's a nearly 35-year-old community in Germany. And I'm telling you, this is really, like, people are still active from that very beginning. I was just sitting with a friend for dinner last week who was one of the founders who was sitting at this table when they had the idea in 1981. Um, and here one part already starts. It's acceptance. Because that friend, I mean, he must be more than 20 years older than me. But it doesn't matter. We don't even reckon it unless it's about something which happened when I was a kid or not even born or something, right? But um, one quality or one feature or characteristic, to have it more neutral, um, of this group is the full acceptance of everyone, independent from any outer characteristics. So I pasted our um, anti-harassment statement. I don't like that name because I don't see any like conferences need to have this nowadays, apparently, tech conferences. So um, I put this, it's in hillhex.in slash FAQ, so it's just part of the FAQ. Are we going to be excellent to each other, is the question. And the answer is yes. We all will be excellent to each other to provide a safe and friendly place for everyone, regardless of religion, birth, age, caste, gender, sexual orientation, disability, or any other outstanding element. We want to, each, we want to interact with each other truthfully and honestly um, at all times. So, and this is what we're trying to live, and this is, I think, what we are living. So, um, also at the congresses, which you just learned are like 12,000 people nowadays on one conference, it's still like we don't have any, like there's no, no accidents, there's n barely any stealing happening, there is a, a really a deep, deep um, acceptance and respect from each other. Um, which I think this acceptance of each other is based on a big trust and belief that everyone you're meeting in this context will be somewhat awesome and passionate about things you uh, are bothered by too. So everyone just accepts the fact, accepts that it is a fact, um, that he or she is just surrounded by uh, interesting and intelligent people and that everyone is worth talking to in the first place. And it um, doesn't matter if that person looks like a punk or is coming in a business suit. OK, that really happens, though. Um, but it's worth talking to. I think it's similar here. Um, you also most probably um, think that everyone who's in this building now for the GS Foo would be worth talking to, because he or she apparently is interested in the same thing. The difference is that here, maybe uh, some of you haven't chosen to come here because 
it's just a job, right? You're like a coder every day, you have to make JS. And so you come here to talk to people about JS. Okay, that's work. So here it's about free free stuff, like what you do in your um, in your free time. So um, with acceptance also comes respect. So uh, I think at Hillex also people had the, the same feeling that it was really breathtaking, like how many interesting people were there. And like I met quite some people who said, oh my God, how can I like even talk to any of them? We were just like a hundred people, but still, and we were living together. We were living in tents, so we spent 24 seven together, but still um, it's not easy to get uh, connected to everyone. Um, and also to mention, like everywhere, there will be people not getting along with each other, sure. And they might not, or they not getting along with each other too well. Um, but that's okay, because we all learned to handle that online already. Ignore. And when you ignore, you also accept that that person is there and that that person belongs to the group. And okay, I mean, you don't like that person now, or maybe you like that person, but you cannot just handle that person because for whatever reason, you just don't like his nose. Um, but you still accept the existence of that person within your group, um, which is also somewhat of a relationship. Um, so you still respect that person and respect comes with acceptance, and acceptance comes with respect. Um, with the result that you are in a place where you can just be as you are. There's no mask you have to wear, nothing. I had this once with a girlfriend, like a kindergarten girlfriend from my hometown. She's also living in Berlin, so I, like when I'm in Berlin, I spent some time with her as well, and with my like CCC people, and often, the two get together. So she's joining me for whatever place where she's done together with the, all the hackers and all that. And then she said once, she's feeling so comfortable with them and she's not a techie at all, she's an artist. And she's an artist in this like theater scene. So she's surrounded by many, yeah, do you know the word diva? Like many artists who are very, yeah, also passionate but very strenuous, very, like, you, it's not easy to handle them, right? I mean, we all have this picture of, like, a freaky artist in mind. So she's surrounded by that people. And she says she always has to wear a mask because it's always... Um, there are so many intrigues. There's so much inner politics with this, within, within this theater. You always have to think about whom you talk to, what you talk to. And she said in, in, in that group, she has the feeling that this is not there at all. Like people are just as they are, and they just accept her as they are, as she is, even though she's not a technologist at all. As an artist, she's still somewhat of a hacker, but... <laughs> um, so yeah, the respect and the acceptance. And then the next thing is trust. So I was already mentioning the trust, the trust which I have for example, in this building. So I have the trust in Hasgeek if I'm a, a JavaScript hacker that everyone here will be an interesting person because, yeah, this is a conference about this, so I trust the environment. But here, um, it's about the trust amongst people. Um, so being comfort comfortably without being worried about who you are, where you come from, and all that, comes from the point that we are trusting that the people showing up in our context environment are somewhat great people. Um, and that's the trust foundation we have in everyone by default. Um, so we have this default trust to persons that they're nice, right? We just see this as a fact. But then we also build up um, personal trust um, within this group, within uh, single persons. I also guess this was pretty strong at Hellex because we actually lived together um, for weeks. 
So we had to share everything. We also shared, we had like 400 people, we had eight bathrooms. So no one had a private bathroom. And um, so there it already starts, right? When you live together. Um, so, and this is a point where you can establish deep relationships if you're open for it. And even if you're not open for it, you'll be making many connections and friends. Um, and trust is something, I think it's one of the biggest things in our life we can like get from someone. And it's the biggest thing we can give to someone. It comes with a big responsibility as well. And um, it also needs time and action. So you usually only trust in someone after you've seen that you can rely on that person. Um, and we all know it takes seconds to destroy trust, but it takes a long time to establish it. All right, so this was now the, like, the acceptance, respect and trust is the three main points which I see within that group as the um, basic factors, like the fundament we are standing on. And to draw a connection, I would like to ask you about your own examples. So I could think about your batch at college, which is such a group. Like you lived together for years long, you went through many, many things, and you have people you get along with, you, get pe you have people you don't get along with, but still everyone belongs to the group, and um, you're like having this deep trust and acceptance within this group. Can you relate to that? Yeah. Do you have any other example? What would be like, have you experienced any other group where you have this feeling? Can be also really, maybe you, I don't know, maybe your workplace, or um, maybe you've been on a, on a travel, like on a long journey with a group, like as a kid, going out for two weeks somewhere, and um, there you get this feeling. So you kind of are able to relate to, right? Okay. <laughs> so with this trust, we also have this web of trust. So um, everyone might be knowing it uh, from the crypto side. I mean, who doesn't know the concept of web of trust in the uh, nowadays cryptography? Okay, who doesn't know wasn't maybe the right answer? Who knows about it? Ah, okay, okay. So the idea is that you have trust change. Um, so uh, the easiest example is a friend at your door. Like someone's ringing at your door, you open the door, it's your friend, easy, you let him in, give him a chai, all fine. So next time it's your friend with another friend. But that other friend, you haven't seen him before, never. So you only know your friend. Like person A is your friend, person B is a friend of your friend. So naturally, you most probably let them in, both of them, and you serve them chai. Because it's a friend of your friend, so you have the trust in your friend that he's not bringing you any like stupid guy who's gonna like vomit in your living room, right? So um, this is the, the trust chain you can build. And um, another example is uh, here in this event or in other events at Hillhex, at the CCC events very much. So Hasgeek's also working with volunteers. Um, I don't know how it exactly works, but I think they like sign up and then they show up and then they get a task. So you guys are just trusting that person that um, that person is doing anything uh, well. And the only trust chain you have is that person um, came and got to know about you. So this is the only thing you know. It's just not, it's not a random person from the street. It's a person who came, entered this building, said, hi, I know about you, I wanna help you out. And um, I had this at Hillhex very much. Um, there were 
there was, for example, a person who came maybe a week before we actually started. And then we said, oh, we urgently need someone who's handling the finances. Don't you want to do that? And that poor guy was doing that great, like very, very grateful for that still. But we handed him over the whole money, the whole accounts, everything. Because we just thought, okay, why? Like, I don't have any, there's no reason to mistrust. He found his way to Rucker in our village to the hack base. He knocked at our door and said, hi, I heard about Hillax, I want to join you. So that's already fine. And um, I'm telling you, I barely, like, I cannot even imagine or remember that I got disappointed of this once. And at the congresses, I'm in charge for, like, build up and tear down since many, many years. And there you handle every time. I mean, you have your group of people who's coming every year, but there will always be new people. And you can also make like little tests. You give someone a task, I think that's similar here, and if that person fulfills that task, you give him like more difficult task, more difficult task, and at the end, he's in charge of everything. <laughs> Same happened to me, though. <laughs> um, and another example is hacker spaces. And here we come back. Um, so you might have heard about hackerspaces. It's a, it's a living room of a hacker. It's a workspace. It's a, um, a place to just hang out and to like be together. And I'll be um, moving on into this a little bit deeper with the next slide, but to keep it as the example. Um, I already had many of my Indian friends roaming around in Europe now the last two years. And I always guaranteed them, um, I guaranteed for them in like other hacker spaces. So one guy was in Amsterdam, so he said, oh, I would like to go to Cologne, it's like not far. And I said, sure. So I dropped the Cologne guys in a message and said, hey, there's this friend coming. Uh, you don't know him, but I know him quite well. And um, he want to stay over overnight and for three days, four days. And that was never a problem because I trust my friend um, that he's behaving well, and those guys in the Cologne hackerspaces trust me that I don't send him, send them any like strange person, and um, also you get this acceptance then right ahead, because they know okay this is a friend of Sva, so that must be like a good person, and um, that works very well. So. Um, also, if you don't have the trust chain, many hackerspaces are open for visitors, by the way. They often mention it directly on hackerspaces.org. So when you ever you roam around in Europe, and all of them are open for visitors which are not staying overnight, right? So you should definitely have a look. Because this thing, um, the hackerspaces, is somewhat of a, of a third space. There's this concept of Homi K. Baba, who um, developed this in the social sciences. Um, the third, third space, which is besides your workplace and your family. So you have your home, you have your work, and then you have a third space. Um, the third spaces can be, can be various things, and in that case, uh, the hacker space fits very, very well. So this is where people hang out. Many people who are like living in a hacker space, they actually just go home to sleep. Not even that, sometimes. <laughs> and... Uh, so the hackerspace is a place where you have tools, where you have um, infrastructure, where you have um, everything you need to do your things, which you are doing while you are a technologist. And they all somewhat provide the same, the same uh, infrastructure and the same feeling. I had this once myself that I was on my way to uh, the camp in the Netherlands in 2009 and I was coming from Munich which is like far uh, southeast Germany and Netherlands is west, like northwest of Germany in a way. So I wanted to stop on the way once because driving by car that long I didn't want to. So and I wasn't, I wasn't uh, at the Cologne hackerspace before but I again just asked them, okay can we drop by? And my friend I had with me hasn't had a driver's license, so I was the only driver. And when I came there, it was just a home. It was just like being at home. It was just like you arrived at home, you had a break, you had a rest, and then you continued. There was just everything we needed. 
And um, I had this feeling already quite often, especially when hackerspaces are having the same door system than we have, just like making the same noises. <laughs> yeah, many hackerspaces are openable by SSH or um, SSL certificates, so you don't need to have any key anymore. Anyway, so living together, living together in such a third space might also be something like a, like a family, question mark. So I mentioned that word already in the abstract of this talk. Um, and I'm like, usually in the Indian context, I try to avoid it because here the actual like blood family structures still exist very heavily and construct many parts of your life. In the German hacker spaces and the CCC scene, we are using that term actually very often and often very precisely for this kind of bond and relation we have with each other. Um, in a family, the bond is pretty easy to describe. It's blood and marriage. The latter results in the first. And um, you cannot choose your family. You cannot just decide that you're not a sister, a brother, a son, or a mother anymore. Those roles you have on you for your whole life, unbreakable. And even if you break them by contact, that relation itself, itself, it still persists. Um, and sure, this is different from a hack space family, um, because you can never break down the contact, you can break down the relation. Um, but it's nearly the only proper difference, I say. So in a hack space, you're also living together. You're sharing big times of this chapter of your life with people that are super different from you, like your cousins and your sister and your brother. They might also be very different from you. They do super different things. You cannot relate to them at all. Like you don't have any, any language together. You're just, okay, it's my cousin, so sure, we talk to each other. And it's also nice, but there's nothing which connects us except this blood bond. Um, so your cousins, which you are not like somehow having a same, like finding any, any wave, uh, you would have never met them in any other context. Um, and the same is, uh, is in the hackerspace. There are many people which you would have never met in any other context. Um, you would only be meeting them there because you're so different from each other and your lifestyle is so far away from the lifestyle from the others. Um, yeah, so I'm still unsure uh, if it's good to use the word family, but I guess you get the point right? in this context. So the next characteristic I see is that everyone's welcome. So this again comes with the acceptance thing. So the doors are open, everyone can come and be part of that and everyone has open arms. And care. Everyone's caring for each other. Um, caring for things, caring for each other and uh, caring for the same goals, the same, like you want to have a world which is looking like this and that, and it might be very similar than uh, the imagination of your fellow hacker. And also small things like at camp, you leave your laptop outside overnight by accident, in the morning it's still there, sure, and it's plucked, right? Someone saw it and just plugs it in. Um, so everyone's just caring for the others and for the environment. Um, and doesn't matter what freak you actually are, right? If you're a freak who's having like a living room at home which looks like that, if you're a freak who's making experiments with tomatoes or hanging around in the virtual reality, so again, acceptance, respect, and trust. 
So, um, but what is the bond? And I'm, I'm still not sure, but this is what we're trying to find out. So first of all, I want to ask you, what is a jugat? Because I learned this word just here. I mean, not here right now, but like two years back. And I still really haven't gotten the whole concept. So who wants to tell me what is a jugat? Your, your personal definition. I want to collect more than one. Crazy hack. Okay. I mean, comparing it with the word hack is easy, right? That I already learned. So, hmm? Mm hmm Okay. Mm hmm A whole group by that name. Pardon? A book. Oh, okay. Mm hmm Okay. Innovative, creative. Yeah. Hmm? Frugal in innovation. Mm hmm Right, so isn't it also about the like the fact that I'm trying to understand something to like for example to fix it, like innovation? Yes, that results there, um, but even the step below that um, a jugat's trying to to like fix things on a creative way, but first of all, um, he or she has to like understand first, right? So this is at least where I, um, I ended up as well uh, with the understanding, understanding of each other that we already had, like the acceptance and everything, and understanding of any kymonetic system around us, which can also be a bottle, right? Um, because this is also quite a, quite a system, and then I can reuse it There's in waste uh, upcycling, you find this, that you, uh, you just cut the bottle here and then you use it to close uh, plastic, plastic bags. So you put the plastic bag inside and then you close it again. So the, instead of a bottle, you have a plastic bag down here. So this is a, an example of like, I understood the system. I can still turn the hat on it when there's plastic inside, in between. Um, so that's a system. So yeah, I think one point is the the understanding, or the urge of understanding the world around you, and especially the small things, and also very much because we are very lazy. At least I see that very often that people are trying to automate everything and like to um, being more efficient with things, to be lazy at the end. I mean, not really lazy, because I also think we're kind of persons where you like never get bored and you're never really lazy in that sense. Um, but understanding things also makes your life much easier, right? So, um, but now we have the problem um, of others who don't have this kind of understanding. And uh, man, now I, I don't have the notes for that part. But so here it's about um, the idea that the characteristics which I'm trying to define and which I'm not really good at still, aren't really definable on the characteristics at, itself. It's more defined defined by others who are placing those characteristics on us. For example, when they see such windows on our screens. I guess everyone who's into coding has had this moment where someone saw your screen and then it was like, oh, what the fuck are you doing there, right? But I mean, yeah, I'm writing code or I'm like communicating with systems, 
or maybe I'm just doing email chatting, right? But still, for the people out there, it's like, oh my God, Black Moon knows what are you doing? And um, so we are, for them, the freaks, which I said in the abstract, the experts, which we prefer often, at least here I see this very often. Um, and I would even say for some people we are magicians. And um, I have one example on that, uh, where I had this very hard, um, we made, uh, you know when uh, elections, when you have elections in a country, then uh, sometimes people come and observe the elections. And then they write a report to the, like whatever, a world committee of elections and says, oh, but this election in Africa wasn't democratic, it was all fake and whatever. So um, we had the problem nearly eight years back or something in Germany that we had uh, some uh, electronic voting systems as well. So we thought um, it's going to be fun to make uh, such an election observation there and show outside that's funnily now it's also Germany where you have to observe an election usually the Germans go to Russia or to Africa and they're like yeah we are the Germans so now we said okay that's going to be fun for the media they're going to tell about it the press going to print something um, and uh, we haven't thought too much about that we just thought it's fun um, and then we went there and it's same system as here, you have all those small like kindergarten schools, public places where you have those small election um, cabins and there's five people each place and um, they all went crazy. They were like, what the hell, what do you want to do? Like, who are you? You are those hackers. Oh, don't open your phone. What are you doing with this laptop, right? And this NetApp, it's NetApp uh, voting computers, they don't have any Wi-Fi or air interface. There's no way to get your hands on, uh, to get somehow connected to this machine without getting your hands on, right? But still, the people were super afraid of us because they didn't know what's happening. They didn't know about this machine. The machine was a black box for them, which is already a a nice uh, proof that we shouldn't use black boxes for elections if people don't understand that. Um, but they took us as the magicians. We were even having fun later on and thought, hey, next time let's take a van, let's make a big antenna on it, right? And then we just drive in front of the building and then we have some whatever, like the antenna gun, and we just place it in front of the window and then people will go crazy. Um, so here, that's... a uh, um, I think a pretty good example to show what I mean when people are placing those characteristics on us. They see us as a magician also when we play around with these things. So the, what is it? I think it's only GPS and GSM stuff. It's like if you would have a closer look, everyone would be able to understand what it's about. Not necessarily to understand what to do, but I mean, most of you also won't be knowing how to make a, a closet with drawers. In theory, you know, okay, I have to cut wood and I have to place it all together. But actually doing it is also a magic in that way. It's a special knowledge. Um, so you have any examples maybe about this magic thing, what I mean? Like, have you had any experience where someone was placing this up on you that um, people just said, oh my God, what are you doing? And um, how, I mean, I think we all have this when we like fix someone's printer or something, right? So, um, they give us particular char char characteristics. So, what are these characteristics? So, we are this expert, this magician. Um, that's what we already talked about. We are the geek, the nerd with the glasses, the delivery pizza in our cellar where we don't go out and stay up all night long. And like being a, a person who like, I don't know, has two different socks and stuff like that. And analytical thinking, good in math, very precise and 
super professional ones concentrated, a perfectionist, very stiff, all these stereotypes. Um, I'm not sure if anyone would be taking them up yourself. What I see definitely is curiosity. So, yeah. Yeah. So 15 more minutes and um, curiosity is we are never bored as well. That I would say. And 15 more minutes, that's perfect because I'm on my last slide where I noted down um, some more keywords. Um, so first of all, do you have any questions? I mean, I told you to make questions in between already, so I don't expect, okay. How do we manage to get the network? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, over air. So we get network over air and um, it comes uh, from pretty far away. So we have two local ISPs who are serving us a network. And um, so what we do is we place an antenna on the top of our roof and then we have a line of sight to somewhere like many kilometers away, like another hill. and our antenna connects with that antenna, and that antenna most probably is also only connected to another antenna and goes down into the valley and then it gets uh, cover only, I believe. And there's a beautiful part, we at the camp, we had a, um, a talk about hill hacks and that stuff, where um, one of the network guys uh, were telling like five or seven minutes about this with beautiful pictures and all that. So if you go on media.ccc.de, uh, maybe just enter my name, Spa, and then it will be show up in the list. And then I think it must be after 15, 20 minutes or something is his part. Yeah. <laughs> Any other question? Okay. So I have this list um, of stuff which I also found pretty important, but which I couldn't really work in. Um, in this in this thing so far, but I would still like to um, mention it. So filter. Filter is something very very important. We all know this from online. So I I said okay, you can ignore people. Sometimes you also just filter them, like you ignore them physically, technically, and um, in these real life spaces, these meet space you need to have an actual filter. If there is, like, if there's this full acceptance, if there's this fully welcoming thing, you also need to react after a while as a group if someone doesn't, doesn't suit the group, for whatever reasons. There can be various reasons. Someone can be just an asshole, not, like, whatever, never doing the dishes and, like, only putting his legs on the table and not, not, um, not contributing anything at all. So in that case, such a person usually, I mean, maybe he has other, other qualities, maybe he's a good like DJ and makes the music at night, but then it's already a contribution, right? So if someone doesn't contribute at all, he usually also just gets ignored in meat space as well. And such people also then just disappear after a while because they get bored. Same with trolls. We all know the problem with trolls, um, they just go on your nerves on and on and on and on and um, you can also just ignore them and they also in meat space They'll be disappearing after a while um, Or you really tell them okay guy You are just annoying and um, Let's try to get along and after a while maybe we don't so that's one thing The other thing is you also need filters because sometimes you're doing some stuff which is just a bit more confidential, right? So you need to have some more trust among the group. So um, I think that's also the natural filter. Everyone knows this. Um, when you invite people at home, um, let's say you are a teenager, you won't necessarily take everyone into your room, but everyone's going to be in the, like, whatever entry space of your flat. Um, so you create filters actually naturally all the time. Then uh, conflicts. Sure, in these groups you have conflicts, you have to fight, and you have to um, 
also solve them. There are various various approaches to do that. Um, you have the problem of alpha dots, especially over long periods of times, that people like don't disappear from their whatever position they build. Um, so they build up any position, they build a kingdom around them, and um, they don't disappear from that place ever since. So uh, they got this place because they were like somewhat active and they did this and that and they got this responsibility but after a while they might not doing the things but they are still on the like on the chair uh, I think we know this maybe from university context um, at work it can also be similar um, then the whole communication so um, fortunately we have uh, the whole online communication on hand so you have group communication, you have single communication, um, you have uh, synchronous uh, communication, you have asynchronous communication, all these things. Um, but still very, very important, meet space, meetings is still the best communication you can have. Then you have the doing things together, especially in such a group. A hackerspace can have up to a few hundred members. So they barely do anything all together. Everyone's working on own stuff, on, on small stuff in groups. And uh, sometimes they have a big project that they all work together. And this um, brings the group together um, very much. I think uh, also the Hill Hackers can tell their stories about it, especially the ones who were there early and like participating very much on the preparations and all that, like doing things together also bonds you together very much. Then uh, the topic of, of pseudo-leadership and self-motivation. So everyone has pseudo, pseudo like you have in Linux, you can just be root um, on demand and you can just also give it away when you don't want it anymore. So you, you can act responsible. And um, this is also quite a characteristic characteristic from this uh, kind of communities that you are um, that you can take the lead anytime there is not any strict hierarchy and um, you need to be self-motivated to do things um, which results into uh, a, a decision way uh, or a way of decision making which we have in German very much it's uh, we say uh, wer macht hat recht sounds a bit nicer um, then the translation, the one who is doing is right. So, um, but here again, like if someone, like whatever, wants to change the color of the wall in the hacker space, everyone can talk about it, right? Oh, I want to have it red, I want to have it yellow, I want to have it green, the proper bike shed pattern. But someone can also just stand up and buy color and start making the wall into a color. So, um, and then that person just created facts. So in that person, in, in, that, uh, in that moment, not every person might be fine with that new color in the hackerspace. But the one who was doing it is just right, by default. That's like a rule, right? Because if you don't like it, why haven't you done it yourself in your color? So, no, you wouldn't have done it, so it would be still like dirty and whatever. Um, so, the one who has done it, he's took, he's, he's took the championship on it, so he's um, just right. Um, which also comes to the point, which is the last one here, and I will talk about the open society soon, uh, safe to fail. So, you also need to create uh, environments, or those environments actually create like naturally by themselves as well, where you are safe to fail. So I'm a noob in that hacker space. I get this discussion about this wall painting. So just go and buy a color and everyone hates me afterwards, right? Everyone says, oh, but that was just a joke and we don't even meant that serious and what the fuck are you doing now? So no problem, you can still repaint it in whatever color everyone likes and you can make a democratic vote on the color and uh, get rid of your bike shed pattern and um, so it's always actually there's barely anything where you're not safe to fail. You can fail 
in everything and you will be still alive. Everything will be still working around you. Yeah, and then the whole open society, which is a, like a keyword in, um, in this world, um, that you are um, yeah, having this open knowledge, open information, open source, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can go on. Ah, okay. So, uh, since you were talking about uh, democratic practices in uh, hacker spaces and hacker communities, so what I really like is how everything is done or everything is community driven. Oh, the thing I'm concerned about is it can be, and correct me if I'm wrong, it can be sometimes um, elitist and it can exclude a lot of people. So what I'm interested in knowing from you is are there hacker communities who, are, who believe in these kind of principles, are, are they taking these to democratic institutions? As in, are they fighting elections to actually form a government where they can apply these principles in a much broader context? I, I don't understand the question, but also um, in like uh, uh, acoustically, not fully. So no, no, uh, I'm, you what, what, I'm saying, to, what I'm trying to yeah. ask you is, uh, are there uh, hacker space, uh, people from these hacker spaces Mm -hmm. Are they going in, trying to go into demo, uh, de democratic institutions, trying to apply these principles in broader contexts, like at uh, either at a district level or a city level or uh, even at a country yeah, level? Yeah. Maybe maybe a pirate party kind of mm -hmm. example is an example. Yeah, you know, yeah. Is, is so case pirate ours. party would be would be the the lively example, which is close to die though, but still they tried and um, they are still trying. I mean, European wide you um, still have them very alive. In Germany, it was an experiment that is about to fail. Um, but uh, the pirate parties are having this whole uh, structure of the so-called liquid democracy. So um, this is coming a bit, uh, bringing together a lot of these um, different um, approaches. So Democracy, what we have, or what we call democracy in our, in our world, is you elect or you vote for a representative, and that representative is making decisions for you. So this is our system. And uh, the idea of liquid democracy is that you are, um, that your vote always stays with you, and you can give it liquidly to a person. So that means I, um, for example, don't have any kids, so I can say, okay, I give all the stuff which is related to kids, I give it to my brother, because he has kids. And he'll be making a good decision, because it's my brother, I trust him. Um, or, and my brother at the other hand side might be saying, oh, but all that stupid internet shit, I cannot even follow that. I give it all to my sister, she's gonna make a good decision. So now I have my vote and the vote of my brother in the stupid internet shit. Um, now something's happening where I don't really, like I'm not able to follow myself anymore. So a decision is ongoing and um, I say, well, what the fuck, I, I really don't know what is right and what is wrong and what I should vote. So now I can also go and put my vote and the vote of my brother, like my vote and all the votes I'm carrying, um, onto another person again. So I say, okay, this friend of mine, he's like totally into it and I totally trust him to make a good decision, so I give it to him. So the idea of liquid democracy is that you still um, have representatives of um, like discussing stuff with each other, making decisions, because sure, not everyone can decide everything. That's not possible, we all know that. So still you have representatives discussing and deciding, and um, ideally in, in, in consensus but at the end you can still like make a yes or no. And, um, but these representatives are, yeah, somewhat liquid. So um, I can also, when there's something like, there's a kindergarten should be built next to my house. I don't wanna have a kindergarten next to my house because it's loud. So in that particular decision, I can also take back the vote which I gave to my brother and say, okay, in that particular case, I wanna vote myself because I'm against this kindergarten and you are not. Um, so you're very liquid with that. Um, the problem with this system is uh, the implementation. Sure, 
so we tried with software very hard, and um, there are many, I think, three big uh, liquid democracy systems um, out there, and uh, they are in, in testing in various smaller groups, especially the private parties tried it very, very much. Um, but yeah, the implementation is the, is the, the, the big problem. Um, otherwise, um, the only thing how we, uh, I would say, rather interrupt democratic uh, processes is more um, something like these voting computer action I was telling about. So um, in that case, um, we were, like there was uh, a legal case against, against voting computers and we were campaigning a bit to give it a more attention. Um, so having this like stupid idea of having this uh, voting observation actually resulted quite well because we had um, we had quite some findings, like including the computers were standing half an hour in front of the door with no one watching them and stuff like this. Then uh, some people might have heard about the uh, the fingerprint we published of our Minister of the Interior in 2007 or 8, which also resulted in two that there is no fingerprints in our uh, ID, um, which they plan to. Um, so it's more like these kinds of actions, because going the, like the long democratic way in the voting computer debate, it was actually done. It was a proper legal case. It took five years till the Constitutional Court was like deleting the existence of any voting computers in Germany. Um, and uh, in that case with the fingerprint at all, I mean, they just deleted the fingerprint from the ID plan, which was supposed to come out next year, um, the actual finished ID. And they, sure, they never said that was because of us. But it was like very close to each other and it was very clear that it was because of us. So, and there again, you just, I mean, just, you need to get the fingerprint of your Minister of the Interior and then you can publish it. So um, that's not really the, the usual process of a democratic <laughs> decision making. Yeah. All right, any other question? Good, because we are now just by 60 minutes, so I would stop now. <laughs>